All right, here's part B of the Unit 2 review. Hopefully it's shorter than part A. Uh, it starts up with name that property. So, um, all right, right off the bat, I see segment BC is congruent to segment BC. So since it's the same, same C's on both sides, um, I know that that is the reflexive property. So the reflexive property means, uh, like when you look in the mirror, you see your, your reflection, you see the same thing. Um, so when we see the same thing on both sides, we know that's the reflexive property. All right. So that's, that's what that one's all about. Up next, it says if WX equals QP and QP equals JK, then WX must be equal to JK. So that one goes from the first thing all the way to the last thing with a middleman connecting it. It transfers the equality around and we call that the transitive property. All right, it transfers the equality, it's the transitive property. That's like saying if, um, if I'm the same height as David and David is the same height as Juliet, then uh, I must be the same height as Juliet. Okay, that makes sense. All right, um, so it transfers the equality um, through something else. All right. Uh, the next one, I got parentheses, and it looks like I'm multiplying the 5 by both things in the parentheses. Well, that's our good old distributive property. So old school, right? Distributive property. And the next one says, if the uh, angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B must be congruent to angle A. So it just does a little switcheroo, kind of like our converse, right? It just, just flips it around. Well, that's our symmetric property all right it's symmetric boogie woogie woogie cool cool and then uh the next uh, question same same deal name that property bc equals rs well it goes from that to saying ab plus bc equals ab plus rs so if you notice they added an ab to both sides so if we added something to both sides that's our addition property of equality Again, I should have specified on number eight that that was the reflexive property of congruence, the transitive property of equality, the distributive property, and then the symmetric property of congruence. So sometimes um, we'll have to say whether it's congruence or equality, and that's 100% just based on what symbols they used. So, all right, it's all about the symbols there. The next one says if jk equals 7, then 2 times jk equals 14. So you notice from one step to the next, they just multiply by 2 on both sides. So that would be our multiplication property. All right, all right. The third one, if x plus z equals y plus z, then x must equal y. If you notice, from one step to the next, from the if to the then, something disappeared. On both sides, the z vanished. So they subtracted z on both sides. So that one should have been the subtraction property. And then lastly, if the measure of angle P equals 75 and the measure of angle Q equals 75, then the measure of P equals the measure of angle Q. There it is, that's your transitive property again. It transfers that equality, transitive property. So you know that's going to be an important one. I mean, we saw it twice. Okay, it transfers that equality around. Uh, and you know what? Um, to be super honest with you, uh, sometimes they, they could say that that's the substitution property there um, because of the way uh, we could have just said, all right, well, since P equals 75 and Q equals 75, um, they could have simply substituted and switched out that P for that 75 and said, well, the measure of angle P must be equal to the measure of angle Q. So the transitive property and the substitution property can look a lot alike. Oh, snap. All right, next question says, write a statement about each figure using the postulate or given definition. Write a statement about each figure. Use this. Oh, okay, we got this. Um, use the segment addition postulate. Well, the segment addition postulate says I can add segments up. Well, I could be like, okay, segment AB plus segment BC is equal to the Big Papa 
and the Big Papa would be called AC. All right, and I'm not putting hats on top because I'm talking about their lengths. So the length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC adds up to the whole thing, length AC. Um, next one says use the definition of a midpoint. Okay, okay, well the definition of a midpoint is that the midpoint B divides it up into two equal pieces. Okay, and, and the midpoint must be B because I see these nice marks here, these tick marks. So because B is the midpoint, because of the definition of a midpoint, I know that AB is, I, well, I could do this a couple different ways. I could say segment AB is congruent to segment BC. I could be real classy like that. Or I could say that the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. All right. So, and the connection between the two is the definition of congruence, because congruent means that the segment's lengths are equal. So it's all good. It's all good, man. Okay, and up next is the definition of an angle bisector. Okay, the definition of an angle bisector is very much like the definition of a midpoint. An angle bisector does the same thing for an angle that a midpoint does for a segment. So our segment bisector here, KM. Hey guys, I'm KM. I'm the angle bisector. All right, it divides it up, it divides that angle up into two congruent chunks. So those two congruent chunks would be angle LKM for this guy. So we could say that the measure of angle LKM is equal to the measure of angle, the other one is, let's see, MKJ. So this, this one's MKJ. All right, so that's one way to write it. I could have also written it using uh, congruence I could have said that, uh, uh, let's see, I could have said that angle LKM was congruent to angle MKJ, angle MKJ. So either one of those is good. And number 11, write equations and solve them for the variables. Now when we do this, we're, we're going to do our X variable, we're going to do our Y variable. Don't try to do them at the same time, that's weird. All right, so looking first at all the stuff that has X's in it. Well, that's this guy and this guy. And I need to know first what type of angles they form. Ooh, they're vertical angles. That's, that's what you should be saying. They're vertical angles because they're opposite each other. Okay. The ones that are opposite each other are vertical angles. So first of all, they're vertical angles, which means that they are congruent to each other. And the definition of congruent is if two things are congruent, then they're equal. So they're equal. 4x equals 6x minus 26. Let's solve it. Let's get all of our x's on one side. So minus 6x minus 6x. That gives me negative 2x's is equal to negative 26. Cool, cool. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. And x equals negative divided by a negative is a positive. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So x equals 13. Now if x equals 13, and this angle is 4x, well, that means 4x. So I would use the substitution property. I'd be like, all right, well, x is 13. So 4 times 13 is 52. Look at that math. So 52 degrees. And if that's 52 degrees, then this has to be 52 degrees as well because they're vertical. They have to be equal to each other. And I can check my work. I can be like, all right, 6 times 13 minus 26. Oh, gosh. Well, that's 60. That's 18. 78. 78 minus 26, which is 52. Yay. We're smart. Look how smart we are. Now, when we go to do the Y's, it's the same deal, man. What's the relationship between those two angles? Oh, they're vertical again. We'll never get away from vertical angles this year. We'll always be dealing with them. So vertical angles, and we know that the vertical angle theorem is that if angles are vertical, then they are congruent. So these angles are congruent, and the definition of congruence is if angles are congruent, then they are equal. So I know that they're equal. 7y minus 12 is equal to 6y plus 8. 
All right, all right. All of our y's need to be on one side, so I'll subtract 6y on both sides, and I get 1y minus 12 equals ocho. All right, let's get all of our numbers on the other side, so add 12 to both sides gives me gives me um, 1y equals 20, so y equals 20, and we're supposed to plug that back in. So let's start with this uh, 7y minus 12. So that angle 7y minus 12, we'll use the substitution property, 7 times 20 minus 12. 7 times 20 is 140, and 140 minus 12 is 128, probably. 128 degrees and because it's vertical with the other it should be 128 degrees and I know it's right because see how it's next to the 52 so yeah the vertical angles are congruent equal but the linear pairs have to add up to 180 so the fact that I have 128 sitting next to 52 is good because they add up to 180 they're supplementary angulo supplementario yeah I'm learning. Uh, number 12, almost done. Yes, this will not be a 20-minute video. Number 12 says, provide the missing statements and reasons. Now, you're going to have a word bank. I don't have a word bank here, so this might be hard for me, but I know the first one's going to be given. And I know it because 99% of the time, it is. But I can also just see that that's, that's the thing that's given. Check. It's given. All right, and then I go from having a congruent symbol to having an equal sign. That should be our definition of congruence. That should be automatic. Definition of congruence or definition of congruent angles. Sometimes they include that word angles in there. Sometimes they don't. All right, all right. So angle one and angle two are a linear pair. So that would be our definition of a linear pair. I see it. It's, it's happening. I know it's a linear pair because I know the definition of a linear pair. Cool, cool. Angles 1 and 2 are supplementary because that's what happens with a linear pair. That's the linear pair postulate or linear pair theorem, I think they might have said somewhere in our book or notes. So postulate and theorem are kind of, can sometimes be interchanged depending on who wrote the textbook. All right. So yeah, they're, they're a linear pair, so they're supplementary. And if they're supplementary, they're equal to 180 because we know the definition of supplementary. Supplementario. All right. So, and then something happens here. It said angle one plus angle two equals 180. And now it says angle one plus angle three equals 180. So how are they doing that? What are they, what are they doing there? They're replacing angle two with angle three. So if they're just straight replacing something, and they're able to do that because angle two and three are equal, so if they're able to replace angle 2 with angle 3, that's the substitution property. Like when I quit, they're going to replace me with a substitute teacher. I'm not going to quit. It's, I, don't, I can't do anything else. I don't have other skills. I'm not good at anything. Um, so I'll be a teacher for the rest of my life. Up next, um, since angle 1 plus angle 3 equals 180... Well, what does that mean? If angle 1 plus angle 3 equals 180, that means angle 1 and angle 3 are, you guessed it, supplementario. So angle, that looks like a 4. Let's fix that. Eraser. Angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary. Cool. And we're done. That was by the definition of supplementary. So yours will have a word bank. This one didn't. So this one's extra good. All right, our last question. Okay, it says finish the flowchart proof. So with the flowchart proof, what we're doing is we're putting our statements in the boxes with the reasons on the lines. All right, all right, no big deal. So the first statement is going to be what's given to us, and that's that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. It was given. It was given. 
So no big deal there. And then uh, the next one, uh, next one, I kind of have to use my brain. I have to be like, all right, what else do I know? Well, hopefully you're looking at this and you're like, I know something. I know it. I hope you recognize that you know that angle two is congruent to angle three. I know it. I know it's true. So if angle two is congruent to angle three, the, the reason for that is because you looked up there and you're like, hey, them are vertical angles, my dude. So the reason is that angle two and three are vertical angles. Angulos verticales. That may not be correct. I'm trying, though. All right, so we know that, we know that, and then um, let's put it together. If angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle two is congruent to angle three, well, you see how angle one and three are both congruent to angle two. So if they're both congruent to angle two, then they're, they must be congruent to each other. Angle one must be congruent to angle three. That's the transitive property. It transfers that equality. Angle one's the same as two, and two's the same as three. Yeah. All right. So that's it. That was less than 20 minutes. That's good. I can just sit here and talk for the next three and a half minutes. Yep. Um, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. I got nothing. All right. Go study. Do something productive. Go study for a little bit. They take a break um, and go do something good. Go, go do a good deed. Go help somebody just for a little bit and then come back and study some more. Um, all right. Yeah. Have a good day.